Hi, John here. In this video, we're going to look at the spark plug. We're going to look at where the spark plug is used in what type of engines. We're also going to look at the spark plug's main components. We're going to look at how it works. And then we're going to discuss some concepts such as hot and cold spark plugs and spark plug reach. So let's dive in. We can see a spark plug in front of us now. This is our interactive 3D model of a spark plug. Spark plugs are used in gasoline and petrol engines. We refer to the fuel as gasoline in the States and places like that, whereas in the UK we refer to it as petrol. The fuel is the same, just two different names. And we use a spark plug to ignite this petrol or gasoline. We can see on the video now that we're looking at a two-stroke engine. And as the piston approaches top dead center, there is a spark from the spark plug and this spark ignites the fuel and then we get our power stroke. So that's what it's doing. But now let's look at the components and then figure out how we're getting this spark. Okay, so here we've got a spark plug. And in order to figure out how it works, we're gonna to need to look at some of the components. So I'll take a cross section and we'll work our way down from the top. We can see we've got a terminal connection on the top or a place where we can connect the high voltage that is created by the ignition coil. We're gonna actually talk about the ignition system in a different lesson. However, the ignition system supplies a very high voltage to the top of the spark plug, to the connector or the terminal. And this high voltage is gonna be in the range of between 20,000 to 40,000 volts. We're gonna connect that high tension voltage to the top of the spark plug. This high voltage is actually then transferred through the spark plug through a central electrode. So it's gonna travel down through the spark plug. This black area here would actually be a piece of copper and this is our conductor. So we call that the central electrode. And when we get to this piece here, this jagged area, this is actually a resistor. And I'll explain to you what that does a bit later on. But the high voltage, or the current I should say, because it's a current that actually flows, it's gonna flow down this way through the resistor, down along the central electrode, further down, further down, through the spark plug nose, or the insulator, tip and then all the way down to the bottom of the central electrode. We can see the central electrode terminates here and there's a gap and the piece on the lower side here is called the ground electrode. But the ground electrode as you can see is not connected directly to the central electrode. There's a gap here and we'll actually call this our electrode gap. It's quite important because the larger you make the gap the higher the voltage that will be required in order to jump the gap and get our spark. But before we talk about that, let's go up and discuss some of the other components quickly. We can see we've got the screw thread on the side. That allows us to screw the spark plug into the engine. We've got a washer, and then we've got a outer casing section here. And you'll notice as we get up, we've also got a hex nut, it's this bit. That allows us to tighten the spark plug onto the engine or to loosen it off again. And this white shiny piece is our porcelain insulator. The porcelain insulator is there to stop the voltage leaking out from the top or leaking from the top and trying to get to ground along this route here. If we had a piece of metal that ran from, for example, here, our terminal connection all the way down and connected to here, zoom in and show you that again, down here and connected to here, then the voltage would travel from the top, from the terminal connection all the way down, and we would get a short circuit. We just have a lot of electrons that are just flowing straight down to ground because this lower piece of the spark plug, or this section here, is grounded on the engine. So in order to prevent that, we have this porcelain insulator. Porcelain is a very good insulating material and we actually use this on high voltage bushings, such as for transformers. And we have this root shape to increase the path that is required by the voltage to get to ground. If we had a straight line from here 
to here on the porcelain insulator, then the distance to ground would be a lot less than if we have this ribbed shape. So that's why they have the ribbed shape, it's to make it harder for the voltage to get to ground because it has to travel across more of the insulator. I mean, you'll see this same effect on large transformers. They also have very large bushings and have weird shapes, but the concept is the same. We're just trying to make it as difficult as possible for those electrons to flow to earth. So that's that porcelain insulator. So we connect the terminal to the top, current flows in and high voltage. It flows along our central electrode and to a resistor. Now the resistor is there to reduce the amount of electrical interference or noise that is created when we get our spark created by the spark plug. People refer to this as electromagnetic interference or radio frequency interference. So what we're actually getting is a lot of electromagnetic noise that interferes with other electronic circuits. Remember a lot of electronic circuits that you use on a day-to-day -day basis with your smartphone or your radio or even the engine control unit, those are operating at millivolts. So it doesn't take much electrical interference in order to make them act slightly abnormal. And it's the resistor in the spark plug that reduces the electromagnetic interference from the spark plug and stops it affecting all the gadgets and gizmos that you would normally have within your car. Now let's go down the central electrode a bit further. We've actually gone into the insulator nose. That's this whole section here. And the insulator again is insulating the central electrode from the body. You'll see we've actually got insulation throughout the entire spark plug to ensure that the voltage or the electrical current flows only through the central electrode and the resistor and does not try and get through the insulator and flow to ground. So the insulation is very important. We go all the way down now, we get to the base of our spark plug and we can see now the only thing that's got to happen to complete the circuit is that that current has to flow down this way and jump the gap. The reason we have such a high voltage is because we want that high voltage to ionize the air in this area. If you want to learn more about this, it's actually called dielectric breakdown strength or dielectric strength. But what it essentially means is the high voltage is going to try to jump the gap here by ionizing all of the gas in this space. If it can ionize all of the gas in this space, then that gas is going to be able to carry electrical current. And if it can carry electrical current, if it becomes a conductor, then the electrons are going to jump across from the central electrode to the ground electrode. We actually call this an arc. This arc has a lot of energy and a very high temperature. And it's this high temperature and high amount of energy that's going to cause a fuel air mixture within the combustion space to ignite. So the fuel in this case is going to be gasoline or petrol. It's not going to be diesel. Once we get ignition, then we're going to get our power stroke. Now the ground electrode is called the ground electrode because it's connected to the ground, or I should say it's actually grounded on the engine. And electrons love to flow to ground. You may have noticed this if you ever look at a thunderstorm, there's a reason we get lightning and that's because there's a lot of electrons, a lot of electrical charge that's built up in the clouds and it wants to get to ground. And we see these electrons trying to get to ground because they appear as bolts of lightning. And that's essentially what's happening here. These electrons that have flown down the central conductor, they also want to get to ground and they're going to jump or arc across the gap and flow to ground through the ground electrode. That's this entire piece here. And the engine in this case is serving as the ground. You may hear people talk about spark plug reach spark plug reach is actually the distance from the lowest part of the thread on the spark plug up to roughly where the washer is as indicated now. This is what they refer to as spark plug reach. And it's quite important that if you're changing spark plugs, you ensure that the reach for the new spark plugs is the same as the reach for the old spark plugs. The reason is if you put a spark plug into the engine that has too long a reach, you may even connect the spark plug with the top of the piston. 
As you can imagine, this isn't good because every time the piston comes up, it's going to bang against the ground electrode. In addition to that, you'll actually get carbon deposits that will build up on the spark plug thread within the combustion space. So it's very important that when you change spark plugs, you ensure that the reach of the new spark plug matches that of the old spark plug. You'll often hear people referring to spark plugs as being either hot or cold. They're actually just talking about the thermal characteristics of the spark plug. If we have a hot spark plug, it means it heats up quite easily. And if we have a cold spark plug, it means it's quite resistant to absorbing heat. A hot spark plug will have a long, thin insulator nose, whereas a cold spark plug will have a short, fat insulator nose. Because the cold spark plug has a shorter and fatter insulator nose, it can get rid of the heat a lot more quickly. The heat is actually rejected to the cylinder head of the engine and then typically to the coolant water system, although some of the heat will also be lost to ambient air. Hot spark plugs can be used for things such as lawn mowers. These are small engines that don't have a very high operating temperature. Or specifically, they don't have very high operating temperatures within the combustion space. However, high performance engines do have very high pressures and temperatures within the combustion space. And for this reason, you need a cold spark plug in order to get rid of that heat as quickly as possible. So cold spark plugs have a very short thermal reject path. The heat range of the spark plug is given on the spark plug. It'll be usually indicated on the porcelain insulation. And typically it's going to be a number within the range of 1 to 11 or 1 to 10. But it depends upon the manufacturer of the spark plug. If we go back to our lawnmower example, we know that the engine is generating a relatively low amount of heat. So we're going to look for a low heat range spark plug. And that means we're going to look within the range of two to five, typically. If we look at a high performance engine, perhaps a racing car, then we are going to have a high heat range because there are high temperatures. So we'll use a cold spark plug with a high heat range, and this may be as high as 10 or 11. So that's the main components of a spark plug and how it works. If you like this video, please do share it or like it on social media. And if you want more videos like this, then check out the link in the video description area. There you'll find a link to a combustion engines course. And if you click on that link, you can purchase the course at a discount price. Thanks very much for your time.